talk about um, uh, the times when uh, this country uh, or civilization tries to do the right thing. And I'm curious uh, what you think about uh, President Obama's uh, chances of resisting the current uh, increasing drums for war against Iran and its nuclear capabilities. Okay, now. <laughs> two or three more hours. <laughs> um, this is a, a, a vexing issue uh, because no matter what happens in the Middle East um, uh, over the long run, this has a short fuse. That is to say, uh, from an Israeli perspective, there is a fairly clear determination that something's got to be done in the next X months. Usually they'll say six months or ten months or something like that. Uh, and it's now generally recognized that the Bush administration uh, refused to, uh, to sanction an Israeli attack on Iran. And it seems fairly inconceivable that the Obama administration would sanction a direct attack by Israel uh, on Iran. So then you have the possibility of Israel attacking Iran without, uh, without going through the United States. And the difficulty here is that Iran will consider it an attack by the United States uh, whether we approve of it or not. Um, the, uh, when Ambassador Javad Zarif, uh, UN ambassador from Iran, uh, was leaving um, a couple of years ago his office uh, at a lunch in his honor, I directly asked the question if Israel attacked Iran without American permission or assistance, would Iran uh, retaliate against the United States? He said yes, absolutely, because it is their firm belief, um, first, that it would be impossible for Israel to attack Iran without tacit or open American cooperation, and secondly, because of the belief going back to the period uh, of the Iran hostage crisis and the admission of the Shah for medical treatment, and before that, to the Mossadegh period, uh, the belief that the United States wants to, um, you know, is an oppressive power with respect to Iran, and therefore whatever Israel did would be, uh, would be um, morally sanctioned by the United States, even if you could not prove anything. So now we have a situation where an attack, by, a unilateral attack by Israel, uh, initiates a war between the United States and Iran. Um, this is a very upsetting uh, possibility. Um, it is particularly upsetting because the, the rationale for it is that Iran constitutes an existential threat to Israel uh, in the form of nuclear weapon potential that they may acquire uh, in the relatively near future, uh, and uh, the assumption that if Iran had one or two or three nuclear weapons, that they would, um, that they would target Israel and seek to destroy Israel. Um, rather facetiously, I was recently writing something called, What Would Hitler Do? And uh, the premise was, in 1939, with the idea of the final solution of, uh, you know, that led to, you know, of the Holocaust, in Hitler's mind, would he have ordered the final solution if the Jews of Europe at that time had had complete sovereign control of 200 nuclear warheads? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. <laughs> that Hitler was more interested in the Third Reich uh, being created and his having a state and his conquering Europe and so forth than he was in committing suicide for his country in order to kill the Jews. And I think this is one of the problems when people say Ahmed Ajad's remarks remind them of Hitler. In fact, uh, it's ascribing to Ahmed Ajad a, a posture that is uh, much more evil than what Hitler represented. It's hard to do. Hitler's been the gold standard for evil for, uh, for our generation. But they're saying that Ahmed Ajad would attack Israel with nuclear weapons even though he is he would be absolutely certain that there would be something on the order of 200 nuclear weapons uh, uh, retaliation by Iran, by Israel against Iran, effectively ending the Islamic Republic of Iran. 
So the, the war that is imagined is not a war, would not be a war to remove Israel from the map. It would be a war that would remove the Islamic Republic of Iran from the map. So now the question is, are the Israelis paranoid? Uh, is there ascription to him of uh, a Holocaust intent, uh, a fantasy? Um, or is it substantial enough to initiate a major war over? Uh, there are people in this country and in Israel and elsewhere who feel so strongly that uh, that another holocaust is on the horizon, that they invent um, absurdities in order to prove their case. I can give you an example. Um, I mentioned before Bernard Lewis. Now he's just about 92 or something. I think next month's his birthday. But um, three or four years ago, in August, he wrote an op-ed piece that was published in the Wall Street Journal that said that on August 28th of that summer, uh, Iran was going to uh, drop a nuclear uh, warhead or nuclear bomb on Jerusalem. And he, he, as the most respected senior Middle East scholar in the United States, and certainly among